Hey, it's Maximo and welcome to Maximo's Travels. Today we'll be driving from Merritt all the way to Vancouver International Airport, then catching a bus and a ferry to Vancouver Island. This is a distance of over 400 kilometers and it's going to take us about seven and a half hours to get to. Join us for this travel adventure. We had a huge travel day ahead of us. We departed Merritt around about 7.30 a.m. and began the journey via car, two buses and a ferry all the way from Merritt to Vancouver Island. The first leg of our journey was by car. The distance between Merritt and Vancouver International Airport is around 282 kilometers. It was gonna take us around three hours to reach the airport where we were due to uh, drop off our hire car. The first part of the car trip was on the infamous Coquihalla Highway or Route 5. It's infamous because of the many accidents, up to three to 400 per year, that occur here, especially over the winter months. The Coquihalla Pass is an elevation of around 1,250 meters high and it makes for treacherous driving conditions over the winter months. In winter they can get up to 10 centimeters of snow falling per hour at the highest parts of the pass. It was thankfully summer and quite warm the day that we drove past. The road was mostly a dual carriage highway, very steep and had a speed limit of around 120 kilometers per hour in most sections. It made for fairly quick and spectacular driving. That was a pretty easy drive from Merritt through the streets of Vancouver to Vancouver International Airport. I say it's easy because Joe did all the driving. The car return place at Vancouver International Airport is slightly tricky to find, but it is well signposted. 
I think the only mistake we made was going out of our way to fill up uh, gas or petrol at a petrol station because there was one immediately outside the terminal complex and due to Maximo's co-pilot navigation error we ended up filling on the other side of the river. We navigated our way to the Hertz car rental return slot and handed back the car without any issue. We had covered a total of 1,971 kilometers during our eight-day trip and the cost of the rental was 1,655 Canadian dollars. Quite expensive. But that included upgrading to a four-wheel drive Toyota RAV4 because we weren't sure of the road conditions. We'd booked the BC Ferries Connector bus from Vancouver Airport. We picked Vancouver Airport because of the easy drop-off for the hire car. Our next challenge was to find the Skylynx kiosk which was located in International Arrivals on the ground floor just at the bottom of the escalator. That's Joe standing in front of it after we managed to find it. It did take us a while. In order to find it from the car rental return section you need to go up some escalators, exit the terminal building, walk outside the concourse, enter the next terminal building and the Skylynx kiosk is located almost underneath the escalator. If you think that map is confusing you should try and do it in real life. Because we were travelling on a Sunday morning, the traffic was light and we were able to check in at least two hours before our uh, ticketed departure. The lady in the kiosk was kind enough to put us on the earlier bus. We caught the 1140 bus instead of the 140 bus. This meant we had a couple of hours extra in Victoria that we weren't anticipating. Bonus! We only had to wait a couple of minutes and our bus arrived. It was a much smaller bus than I anticipated. It was to take us to the Tawasan ferry terminal. It took just over half an hour to reach the ferry terminal. It was great to just sit back, relax and take in the sights of Vancouver and its outskirts. And it's interesting because I didn't appreciate how close Vancouver is to the United States. The ferry terminal is right on the border. We had pre-booked tickets for a return trip via bus and ferry from Vancouver International Airport to downtown Victoria on Vancouver Island and then being picked up on our return from Victoria to the bus depot in downtown Vancouver. The cost of this was quite expensive. It was around $229 per person for the return bus and ferry tickets. And I'm glad we were in the bus because the queue in private cars at the terminal looked, well, horrendous. So our bus drove to the bowels of the ferry terminal and we got off. That's the small bus that we were on from the airport to the terminal. We then transferred to a much larger bus. We waited in this larger bus for around about 20 minutes or so. In that time, the ferry had arrived and docked and cars started to be unloaded from it. This didn't take very much time at all. Then it was our turn to uh, drive onto the ferry. It didn't take very long for the ship with all the cars that we saw waiting to be loaded onto the ferry. I think the whole process took more, no more than about 15 minutes. I was really impressed in how well organised the whole process was. The bus then drove onto the main deck of the ferry. I didn't anticipate how big the ferry actually was. It was able to fit whole multiple buses, trucks and all those cars that you saw earlier that were lined up waiting to get on. We came to a stop and had to wait a few minutes until it was safe for everyone to be let out onto the uh, main deck. No one's allowed to stay in this area while the ship is sailing so everyone made it up to the upper levels of the ferry. We were sailing on the spirit of Vancouver Island. Our scheduled departure time was 1 p.m. and the sailing time was 1 hour and 35 minutes. Because it was right on lunchtime we made a beeline for the cafeteria and grabbed something to eat. The cafeteria is quite large and seats many, many people, but my advice would be to line up in the queue because the queue gets longer and longer as the sailing progresses. It's best to uh, get there early, grab a seat, 
and enjoy a nice a lunch. There wasn't much in the way of gluten-free foods, but I may do. After lunch, we went and explored the ship. Was fabulous on the ferry time passed very quickly and it was actually fabulous to see that uh, Canadian Coast Guard hovercraft as well it was time to get back on the bus head out to the Swartz Bay terminal and ride the bus all the way to Victoria the largest city on Vancouver Island and the capital of British Columbia there were just as many cars and trucks waiting to get on the ferry that we've just come off it took around 45 minutes to travel the 32 kilometres between Schwartz Bay and downtown Victoria and our hotel. It was a very long day of travelling. We arrived at our hotel, the Marriott Inner Harbour, at around about 3.30 p.m. We checked in and then decided to explore the beautiful city of Victoria. Victoria is a charming city of around 400,000 people. It's nestled on the banks or the shores of a magical harbour and it's truly, truly stunning. It's spectacular scenery. It uh, really started to go in the 1840s when the uh, British controlled this part of Canada. In fact, the city reminds me so much of Hobart. It's also nestled on a river or a harbour, and much of its uh, colonial history is reflected in the buildings. We enjoyed stretching our legs and walking around a bit, after which we had an early dinner. We chose to go to Milestones Grill and Bar, which is located right on the waterfront. What a perfect vantage point to just check out Victoria and watch all the people and boats and airplanes and birds go by. Joe had a large and delicious pasta dish while I had a steak and some veggies. Joe had a couple of cocktails and I had a couple of beers and a glass of wine. The total bill came to around 205 Australian dollars including the tip. Quite expensive but hey I guess you're paying for the location and you only live once. That dinner at Milestones was pricey but thoroughly fantastic. I would recommend you going there. We finished our dinner and had a walk along the harbour side on the way back to our hotel. The views were stunning. I, I hear bad pipes.
Well, I certainly didn't expect to hear bagpipes on my visit to Canada. We kept strolling along the harbour front, had a look at the marina and some of the spectacular buildings, including the government buildings and the Fairmont Empress Hotel that you can see in the picture now. We couldn't afford to stay here, but we stayed at the Marriott Hotel that was located right behind it. I will do a review of the Marriott Hotel in an upcoming video. I'll also do a video of all the best places you can see in Victoria. That'll be out next. We got back to our hotel and called it an early night. I do hope you like this video. If so, please hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notify bell so you'll never miss another future video. If you'd like to support my channel, please consider buying me a coffee or smashing that super thanks button. Until our next adventure from Canada, you take care and bye now.